So in this chapter, we will look at uh, dynamic analysis of doubly fed induction generators and their vector control. So we see the schematic of a doubly fed in induction generator here, dfig in short, uh, where stator is directly connected to the grid, uh, perhaps through a transformer, which is not shown. And uh, then there is uh, power electronics uh, in the rotor circuit that supplies uh, slip frequency currents to the rotor windings. <clears throat> and in this case, both power and reactive power are taken to be entering the, the machine. So here's a, a schematic of six windings. Uh, in this case, uh, three rotor windings are actual. Uh, you know, they are windings, unlike in the squirrel cage machines where they were representing the squirrel cage. So here we have uh, this uppercase letter representing the, the rotor windings and then the, the lowercase a representing the stator winding. <clears throat> okay, so why use DFIG? Well, they have certain advantages that uh, they can control speed over a sufficiently wide range in uh, wind applications to operate the turbine at its maximum optimum coefficient of performance. Uh, the stator is directly connected to the grid and uh, only the rotor is supplied to power electronics. That is approximately one third of the rated power of the wind turbine. And reactive power supplied to the rotor is controllable and is amplified on the stator side. So that's a major advantage of uh, DFIX that they can supply and draw a reactive power from the stator side. Uh, but the major disadvantage of DFIX is that uh, is the periodic maintenance required of slip rings and brushes. So uh, to, how do we understand the operation of uh, DFIG? Well, first of all, we look at uh, uh, these windings in D and Q axis. And here we'll align once again D axis with the rotor flux as we have done uh, in previous chapters. When I say flux, we are talking about flux linkage. <clears throat> so, and these uh, stator and rotor currents are shown only for definition purposes. So here's the D-axis, and here's the Q-axis, and then, uh, I'm sorry. So it's, uh, I'm not sure what I have to do here. Discard, continue recording, okay. So anyway, we will we'll get back to it. So here, I continue recording here. So I have to do something here. Uh, add in and start recording. I'm not sure what I have to do here. David, I... Okay. So I hope it's uh, still recording. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, assuming that it's still recording, otherwise we'll redo it. So here we have uh, D and Q axis. And it shouldn't have happened. Maybe I pressed the wrong thing button here on this uh, stylus, Q, D and Q axis. Again, that thing is happening. But, uh, <clears throat> but here we see that on the D axis, as we have discussed earlier, we have a rotor and stator D windings. And on the Q axis, uh, stator, stator and rotor uh, Q axis windings here. All right, so uh, having aligned the uh, the D axis to the rotor flux linkage. And record in here, I forgot to mention that uh, we are assuming that all the resistances are zero and all the leakage inductances in the rotor and the stator are zero. And, uh, and this is in steady state. So uh, with those, uh, under those conditions, you can see that the rotor flux linkage is equal to the stator flux linkage in the D axis and similarly in the Q axis here. Okay, <clears throat> so having uh, said all that, uh, you know that since uh, uh, lambda SQ is zero, uh, the D axis aligned with the, the rotor flux linkage, uh, uh, we can say that uh, all the DDT terms, first of all, are zero because this is in steady state, right? So you can see that VSD is given by this expression here, but it's equal to zero because VSQ is zero. And then uh, VSQ, uh, lambda SQ is zero, I should say. 
And then uh, VSQ is given by this expression here. And since that's all there is in the, uh, in the stator, we can relate this VSQ to the voltage that we apply uh, in terms of this uh, stator voltage space factor. Well, VS hat is the amplitude of the stator voltage space factor. Here, you should conf confirm all these things here. And the VSD is equal to zero, right? That is uh, the expression above. So from here, we can uh, then we can calculate, uh, uh, express flux linkages and currents in the, in the d-axis. Uh, these two are equal. And uh, we know from the expression above that uh, Vsq over omega d is equal to omega sd or s. And uh, that is, uh, and this is constant because this applied voltage is constant and we're operating in steady state. So the synchronous speed uh, of the speed of the d axis is constant, omega d. And then, uh, you know, um, these two flux linkages are equal and they're equal, they're being generated by these two currents. ISD and IRD, they are both acting on the D-axis through a magnetizing inductance, L sub M. And uh, once again, we are assuming that the number of turns in the rotor are the same as the number of turns in the stator. Okay. So uh, we can rewrite this expression in terms of ISD being lambda SD over LM minus IRD. And we'll define this quantity here, lambda SD over LM to be the magnetizing induct uh, current IMD here, as given by this expression here. Okay, and then we move on to Q axis and where we see that, uh, of course, this uh, Q axis flux linkage is zero. And uh, <clears throat> since uh, lambda SQ and lambda RQ are equal to these two currents uh, acting on the Q axis, and that's equal to zero, and therefore we can derive the expression between ISQ and IRQ they're equal and opposite in sign over here. And we can write the expression for this space vector for this stator current in DQ reference frame as given by this equation here. All right, <clears throat> then we move on to the rotor voltages. And here we see that uh, uh, again, DDT terms are zero and lambda RQ is zero, therefore VRD is equal to zero. And uh, VRQ is given by this expression uh, DDT zero and resistance uh, drop is zero. So VRQ can be written as uh, omega dA is nothing but uh, the slip times uh, omega D, right? So that being the case, we can rewrite VRQ in this form here. And now we can calculate the power inputs on this, from this, uh, to the stator and to the rotor, both real and reactive power. So uh, PS plus JQS uh, is uh, the voltage uh, times the conjugate of the current. And therefore, this negative sign comes in here because the conjugate. And if uh, this term is zero, and if you multiply these two uh, quantities within the brackets, we get this expression here. Then equating real and imaginary parts, we can see that the power uh, being supplied to the stator is given by this expression here, and the power, reactive power being supplied to the stator is given by this expression. The same thing we can do on the rotor side, where uh, you know PR plus JQR are given by the voltage times the current conjugate, and because the conjugate, this negative sign here, and then you multiply these quantities here, recognizing that this is zero, uh, we get uh, this for the rotor power and this for the rotor reactive power. So there is an external circuit connected to rotor windings uh, that can supply or sink uh, these powers and reactive powers. Okay. <clears throat> and so similarly, we can write uh, the equation for electromagnetic torque, uh, again, recognizing that VRQ is equal to zero. It simplifies to this expression here. And we can also see the relationship between the stator and rotor uh, Real power is given by this, recognizing that PS plus PR is equal to P shaft. That's the electromagnetic power that is being delivered to the shaft. <clears throat> okay, so it's uh, you know taken to be going out of the shaft 
to something external connected to that. So that's really the convention of defining uh, P shaft here. And then uh, for the reactive power, uh, we can uh, uh, again uh, <coughs> make, you the, make use of the equations beforehand that we have derived and it turns out to be this. And this part here, we'll call it the magnetizing reactive power here. And this is the contribution to the stator from the, uh, from the rotor. And you can see this uh, rotor reactive power is amplified because S is generally you know, uh, less than 0.03 or less than 3% or something like that. But in this case, in defects, it could be larger. But whatever, it's a, it's a small quantity. This is probably true of uh, squirrel cage induction machines. But here we can operate at uh, larger values of uh, S, but uh, nevertheless, it's, a, it's, a, it's less than one for sure, but much less than one. And therefore, the power supplied, uh, reactive power supplied to the rotor is amplified. Okay, so that's, uh, as we mentioned, one of the advantages of, uh, of DFIG here. Okay, so, so now let's uh, move on to this example here, uh, just to give an idea as to what uh, this DFIG uh, can do. First of all, it's taken to be operating at a motoring mode, and it's, uh, that, and that means, and it's operating at a subsynchronous speed. So it's operating as a motor and at a subsynchronous speed, and uh, <clears throat> it's at a lagging power factor. That means it's, uh, Q sub S is being drawn from the grid. And what we are asked here is to calculate the signs of various quantities in this mode of operation. So again, there is no secret here uh, in terms of uh, der deriving these expressions. The slip speed is positive, slip is positive, electromagnetic torque based on the, uh, the direction in which we define electromagnetic torque going out of the shaft. This is a motor after all. So it's positive, and then uh, it's drawing power from the stator that turns out to be positive, and the current ISQ is positive from this expression. You can see that omega D is positive and uh, lambda SD is positive. And so ISQ is definitely positive <coughs> if uh, this is acting as a motor. It's drawing power from the stator, and so ISQ is positive, and therefore uh, IRQ is negative. And then we can substitute that into this expression here. And you can see this is again positive and ISD from this expression here, because this is positive and this is positive. This ISD is positive as well here. And uh, <clears throat> we can do the same thing for the, the rotor circuit and uh, uh, calculate, maybe I'll play this trick here and amplify it here that uh, this uh, rotor power is, uh, see it uh, doesn't work, my pen in this mode here. <laughs> so I'll go back. That rotor power, we can calculate that to be uh, uh, negative here because uh, IRQ is negative. So slip is positive, omega D is positive, lambda RD is positive, but IRQ is negative from the previous uh, calculation. So PS is negative, PR is negative, I should say, and uh, QR uh, we can calculate here. And uh, so th this sign should be indicated here. And uh, so this should be uh, positive as well, I think. QR, QR should be uh, positive. And uh, <clears throat> then, uh, so here I IRQ and ISQ, uh, they are related here, that was, made use of it over here, right? So IRD is positive here, but it's, uh, it's taken to be positive, but uh, caveat is that IRD is less than IMD here. And similarly, we can calculate VRD and VR, VRQ. And once we have uh, these uh, VRD and VRQ, uh, we can calculate what uh, the voltages uh, need to be applied to a, B, and C rotor phase windings. And uh, based on these uh, signs we have computed, we can draw this uh, space vector diagram. 
So we move on to the second example where dfig is operating in the generator in the generator mode at a super synchronous speed. So here omega m in electrical radians per second is greater than omega d, which is the synchronous speed, and it's at operating at a lagging power factor, leading power factor, I should say. I should be able to read leading power factor. That means it's supplying reactive power to the grid. And then we go through the same uh, arguments and come up with all these signs, which then would result in these uh, space vector diagrams here over here. So one, you know, one needs to go through these and see that uh, everything is uh, correct. So here, uh, you know, we what we have shown so far is just the steady state operation and assuming uh, the turns ratio to be the same on the rotor and the stator. However, if there's a turns ratio, uh, one should be able to derive these expressions, and that's left as a homework problem. Okay, and then uh, the but the main emphasis here in doing all this is to be able to show that uh, how we can perform vector control on defects as what we have learned in uh, chapter five. Uh, you know, in that case, using a squirrel cage machine. So that is uh, you know, left as uh, as an example, and it is uh, on the website, and one should go and take a look at it carefully and, you know, put all the pieces together. So thank you very much. Let's see if uh, it's recorded, David. <laughs>